Yeah, of course, are we going to do uh, an episode like this today? That's very funny. Yes, it is. Sing. Yeah, it's a pissing. <laughs> this is a special Gothenburg episode. This is Dust War Journals, episode 29. Your number one stop for all news and discussion related to Dust 1947. My name is Johannes and joining me today are... Magnus... And oh, look, I said, yes, <laughs> of course, you, you were only tired before, but yes, <laughs> but the coffee is kicking in now, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, that's great. And uh, being with you two guys and a live microphone, or actually three, is just <laughs> the thing to get started. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, that big hard thing right in front of your oh, face, oh. That's, uh, <laughs> just begging for my mouth to do something about it. <laughs> okay, yeah, just, no, I will. <laughs> That's why we use protection in yes. France. So. Yeah, okay, enough yeah. about that. We're here to talk about dust, I think. Please. <laughs> kind of the, the issue. Why do we always have to have some other agenda when we start? It's something in the air. <laughs> No, no. Well, it's all. It's been holidays. We've been. Yeah. Uh, we've been have time off from work and uh, stuff like that. So of course uh, mm. you you let that get to your head. And when you start work, at least for me, it takes a bit of a while to get acclimated to to uh, the kind of schedule and uh, just the energy levels required. And I'm just rambling because I'm <laughs> damn tired. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Let's let's say this. This is a Friday night. Uh, it's nine in the evening, and we uh, have all been working uh, full weeks so this could be uh, a special nine to nine. <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> now and you start singing dolly and i'm looking at the microphones and the shape they're in johannes one day we have to have a serious discussion how did you think when you bought this type of microphones that we're using i mean <laughs> And why is why is Magnus having just that one? You mean the biggest one? <laughs> yes, amongst other things. <laughs> well, it's an easy explanation for that one, but uh, let's not get into that one. Let's yeah. let's move on. Should we we should talk about dust then? Okay. Yeah, we should. Uh, we actually had a game rather recently. Yes. Or actually, two games. Yes. Yeah, that was, that was really great, and I got to see uh, some of your work in progress to uh, oh. your new uh, kind of. Desert Oasis board. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's coming along very nicely. I've done a lot of stuff since last time I saw this. Yeah. Um, the the the, um, the spark of it all was an old uh, pond I was doing for a desert board, uh, but I never thought it was good enough. So I wanted to experiment with water uh, effects and do something with water on it, uh, just to heighten the pond because I only. I, dr- I made a dried out pond and it was just, well, it didn't, didn't do anything special. And then also I found those, uh, as we've discussed earlier, those uh, GV ruins for the uh, asses something. Oh, what the fuck? We yeah. shouldn't talk about their stuff <laughs> because we're talking about dust. Uh, but the thing is, they uh, one of the boxes makes splendid for uh, uh, ruins for for. for for the Babylon, the Hellgate, the uh, well, all the Middle uh, Middle Asian, no, Middle Eastern, Middle Eastern. Thank you. I'm, <laughs> it's the coffee. It hasn't kicked in fuller. Uh, I'm sorry. You understand me? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they are very nice, and you've also put some uh, some uh, vegetation, some s- kind of small shrubbery or whatever. Yeah, it looks. Yeah, it looks very nice. Uh, I should give a shout out to all the wonderful guys on YouTube that has inspired me to this new technique I'm using with brushes, uh, bushes, I mean, uh, and to give the scenery some some green, even if it's uh, this deserty thing. Uh, But unfortunately, I haven't memorized their actual names yet, so we'll have to come back to that. But uh, but there's a guy in uh, Australia who does some amazing Merklin uh, for them in the trains, and he's so sharp. In doing scenery, um, I shouldn't mention him because if anyone compares to him, all of us others looks like shit. It doesn't matter what we produce. <laughs> he's like a—it's—it's it's no exaggeration. He's just a magician, and he—he he, he knows everything and does everything, and he's just super. So, but but at, 
he inspires. So, uh, well, well, yes, so sorry. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing this build actually actually complete. Yeah, it, it, it has a lot of potential to look really fantastic. And I, I like the fact that it's a lot of greenery. You don't see that much of that on the desert board. So it's a different feel. Yeah, and that's what was really also important to me, that I, I just didn't want another beige board, so to speak. Okay, there's going to be a lot of beige on this uh, desert board, no doubt about it. But it will have more color, more facets, and ho hopefully more intrigue. Um, but it's so it's been a great hobby time. Uh, yeah. If we just uh, kick right into that, and of course you guys are gonna have a say as well about what you're doing. But I also like to mention the fact that I'm also spinning this off for uh, a wood scenery. I'm going to do a board for an uh, European wood. Uh, so it's going to be trees and uh, stones and shrubberies, of course. <laughs> you have to have some shrubberies uh, and uh, perhaps some waterfalls, perhaps some uh, little uh, streams, something like that. Um, it, it's ambitious, I know, but, but I, I have a good feel about that. I've started making some experimental tiles on that and uh, so actually, from last time we were sitting here, I was th thinking like the game was dead, but <laughs> for me that is. But but I mean, now I play with you. I play with Lars. I'm making uh, several boards. Uh, I'm started play testing with my daughter, and we're hopefully gonna now finally play one tournament together. Uh, so I'm I'm super excited. I, I, I hope everyone else is as excited with this uh, yeah there's, there's absolutely a lot of stuff happening and i got to uh, break in my desert scorpions mm. uh, finally first off at the uh, the ldd tournament which mm. we had uh, slightly after after new year's and of course with those games with you and they've uh, i'm very happy with how they perform <laughs> they are just yeah they, they are badass yeah, they're yes they're so brutal and um, I'm, I'm going to talk a bit about, uh, I think, about those uh, a bit later on, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, just, the, just that kind of fact. But um, well, I, I have this kind of uh, core of the army that, that I'm uh, starting to really, really enjoy mm -hmm. with those kill teams. Uh, and you were completely right <laughs> that they just they just murder everything basically, <laughs> except for of course uh, aircraft because they can't shoot at aircraft. Oh, but their transports can. Yeah, mm -hmm. we. I, I was having a quite heavy airlifting platform. I was coming fast and furious with a lot of choppers against you and because I was naive, even though I played with the trucks before uh, a few of them. I was super naive, uh, but you also played super well. You have a very nice thing with a special extra add-on in your army, and I'm not going to tell if you don't want to disclose, and you do something with a special hero and that thing. So everything was... All my shoppers, especially my sweet old Grom, uh, I've, I've really tried to play that one, but it's dying every single time. <laughs> it just comes on the board, even though it's flanked by... 100 others chopper, the Grom is going down. Uh, uh, of, because everybody wants to kill the new toy, of course. Of course. It's, it's, it's just how it is. But I mean, Desert Scorpion can kick ass with any airplanes. That's, they are super hard to play against. So it's going to be really, really interesting to see how, how they perform uh, this year at uh, tournaments like the big ones like Nordic and the UE. Uh, the uh, Warsaw European championships and stuff mm -hmm. like that, just to see how they are going to fare against everything mm -hmm. else, because they are they are hitting really hard. They are definitely, and also to all my SSU friends out there in the world, don't fear. Uh, the Grom got revenge in the second game against Johannes and really did its business. So it's probably just me not realizing or being naive and arrogant with the way I play. <laughs> but as, as with everything. So business as usual. Yeah. <laughs> as with everything, there is a learning curve. So you have to you have to learn to play both with the the new army and against the new army. It's like it's always is. So. Yeah. 
And uh, Magnus, I think you've been mostly busy with work, it seems. <laughs> yeah, that has been really crazy for a couple of weeks now at least, but uh, hopefully it will ease up a little bit. But uh, yeah, you, you just delivered a goodie bag to me, so oh, yes. uh, I got a bunch of new stuff I want to try out as well. Um, other than that, I have been tinkering a little bit with terrain as well. Uh, going back, I have some unfinished projects that I want to finish. Uh, I had plans, hopefully being able to f- to build a table until Nordic. I'm not sure I will have the time to do that, to finish it. Uh, I'm not sure, so I can't really promise that. But hopefully I will have something new. Uh, I have a couple of buildings I'm working on at the moment. And mm. um, yeah, we, we'll see. That's always extra interesting when he's doing buildings because everyone knows Magnus and buildings is a very good combination. Yeah, the one I'm hoping for at least to be finished is uh, one I've, I've talked about it before and it's an add-on to the industrial table mm-hmm. to, to switch that up a little bit. Cool. Uh, that's mm. just... Uh, if, if it's any ter- of your boards that we want you to perhaps work on it's not that you need to do anything but it's just an industrial one that you definitely just could do with a little polish a little spark a little extra gem there yeah and i think um, i think that one needs a little bit more electrical light so that's ah, what i'm working on <laughs> splendid splendid we're looking forward and also we have to mention that i mean magnus is uh, magnus has the um ah uh, what do you call it uh, i don't know what uh, Magnus is cheating a little bit at work because he's, he's doing terrain every day in one-to-one scale. <laughs> so he is practicing. Uh, and yes, I mean, that's, talk- that's true. <laughs> yeah, you talked about that new technique where you were uh, using a special type of... Uh, kind of uh, mold and raising it up. <laughs> yeah, and and doing like that, it. yeah, you should be able to convert that down to 148 scale and, and mm-hmm. use that so... You get it to automate. The thought has <laughs> occurred to me. <laughs> I bet it has, and I wouldn't mind. I would. I wouldn't put it past you to put it uh, to make it. <laughs> you never know. We'll see. <laughs> Great. Let's go over talks about some dust news. Yes, please. There's been uh, uh, quite a lot of cool stuff since last episode. Actually, mm-hmm. first off, we got the purifier and eradicator conversion set. This has been uh, something that's been uh, quite looked forward to. I think by a lot of people trying to get the hold of these units for the for the mythos and I, I have to say for for myself having to having had some experience now in playing them um the eradicator is okay uh, it doesn't do that much but the purifier really cool i mean of course a uh, flame flamethrower mounted on a scout car i mean how can you go wrong <laughs> Yeah, it's a v- very cool uh, unit, and uh, as I said in, in the last episode when we did our top five, the conversion sets was on my list, because I think it's great that they do this, that they, yeah, they, they really cater to the community that way. Oh, yeah. And uh, of course, you, you can always use these parts to make your own uh, dustified kits. You don't have to follow the exact... Uh, sets and uh, just no, no. yeah exactly so be creative yeah yeah you can do all sorts of cool stuff using these kits you don't have to buy a complete model and and use parts from that so uh, yeah i like this mm-hmm. definitely next up we have uh, three classics in a way that's been re-released in uh, some new packaging uh, it's the Luftwaffe RSO pack. This was only available uh, as separate kits before in the mm-hmm. primed version. Yeah. Uh, but now you have a, a single box that, compla- that contains all the three versions. The flak version, the laser version and the pack version. Yeah, that's great. Mm. Also, the uh, primed uh, box with the Steel Guards HQ box. So you get uh, the Command Squad and... Wilo! Wilo. And <laughs> finally, uh, the Pounder and the Hot Dog together at last <laughs> again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, They've been separated for too long. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Some, some really classics there. Oh, and yeah. of course, uh, also the USMC Heavy Machine Gun Squad and the Heavy Mortar Squad. So again, uh, this was also available um, <coughs> quite a long while ago uh, together in that box, but I don't think that's been available. Yeah, correct to me if I'm wrong. Isn't that just super new? Because yeah, there were those exact models with another camo, uh, other paint job, mm. but they haven't been around for USMC. USMC has always had to take them as, uh, or at least one of them, as uh, a block thing. 
Uh, isn't isn't it so? I, I don't play USMC, but uh, so I, I, no, I, I, I don't think, have it. I think this is just a re re release. Yeah, because they, the two because were they, they haven't all been the time. available for quite some time. But I think this is just a re release. Yeah, because okay. uh, the way I remember it is that uh, this exact kit was one of the final uh, final fan, flan, fantasy flight boxes before they switched over yeah yeah but the they day. were block that's what i'm talking uh, about yeah they yeah, were yeah, blocked yeah. then but yeah. i think they actually made so the cards are not new they came with the okay. with the with the card packs the way yeah. i remember it i could ah. be wrong so we could have a, a one crown a challenge on this one <laughs> yeah. uh, i could of do course. i could double up against you guys <laughs> <laughs> i just had a I, so, sorry move along this yeah. is not important this yeah. is me rambling Next one is one that I'm very excited about, the Euphrates Crocodile, the new dustified model uh, for the Mythos block. So this is the, uh, <laughs> this is the, uh, the tank, the, <laughs> the crocodile, with a, again with a f- big flamethrower. And uh, this is another one that I think you can just build yourself if you don't want to buy the premium uh, elite-only dustified kit, which is... A big investment, but for the mythos, I think it's worth it because of that absolutely awesome uh, and, <laughs> as some people have uh, apparently discovered, very time-consuming <laughs> to paint uh, uh, camo scheme. Uh, but this is one that you could use uh, the purifier or flamethrower to probably create yourself. And uh, one of the good things about that is that the Tamiya kit for this tank is still fairly new. I think it was released like last year. Yep, yeah, that's yeah. so true. Uh, we started rambling about the crocodile uh, last April, uh, mm. and I was once immediately wanted to order it. Uh, but then there were some delays because they were putting it out from Tamaya, and they couldn't supply. So you lost a little bit of interest. But then you can never lose lose interest of the crocodile, of course. <laughs> so uh, you were just itching, and when you finally had the possibility to buy it, you of course buy it. But then we started getting in, uh, insight that it perhaps would come a card or it was going to be get into the game. So you waited a little bit uh, on it. Uh, I, I, I want to say some few things about it. Uh, uh, hopefully not too much uh, that people might find negative. Uh, uh, but the fact is that, first off, I was really irritated that this was uh, um, a cult thing because it is... A new, I mean, 1945, they were still producing it. This is a new thing. It's not the old one. It's like everything else. But then, uh, bad me, they made a very good explanation. And I love the text. I really, really think this is one of the better texts when they present the unit that they have for this, when they explain why the mythos can have it and that's also that it's a unique thing that it can only have one because you mean it, the, the sort of fluff text on the yeah. on the website yeah. Yeah. yeah the Euphrates crocodile is one of the cult's heavy assault vehicles firing the um, finding the enemies of the mythos wherever they might hide a simple and straightforward vehicle it's here to burn uh, opponents to death uh, but um, they see they do their best to steal some and adapt them to their need with a special purpose in mind conquer the world but they also say it's um uh, they don't have access to the latest models yeah. so, so sorry, this is, a lot of this is the single one this is yeah a, this is not a euphrates crocodile yes. this is the crocodile yes. this is the single one that the that the cult have yes mm-hmm. yeah and that makes it 100 square with me i think it's super unfortunately though as you all know my second army of choice when I don't play SSU is the Brits. And we know that Britain is swarming with zombies and occult things and shit <laughs> like that all over. And Nazis, no, no, Nazis, New Germans, of course, uh, Axis parading through vital part of Britain. The Brits would have thousands of crocodiles running the country up and down, flaming them. I sincerely hope we soon, soon, soon see this as mass production for the uh, for the allies. Yeah, I'm, <coughs> I'm hoping for a crocodile for the allies as well, and hopefully an updated version, a 1947 version. Yeah, Brian Keith Youth has uh, added on the Facebook uh, um, the fact that he has heard the rumors that they were going to do a crocodile with a phaser uh, as a weapon for the Allies. That that would make sense, absolutely. Definitely. 
and I would convert mine, as you see, standing behind my back here, because I have at least bought one so far. I will buy more as soon as I get word on the card is coming, or else I just have to switch game and start playing Warfare, because <laughs> basically the crocodile could actually make me do this. I, it could go over and play Warfare, because that is a tank I want to play. That's a sexy tank, yeah. yeah. And speaking, of, speaking of the uh, the card, let's just go over it yeah, uh, quite in just uh, in a quick <laughs> fashion here. Yeah. It's uh, a tank 5, and it has 7 hit points, so it's quite sturdy. It's mm-hmm. quite standard for uh, for a tank 5, but just the fact that it's a Mythos tank with tank 5 makes it quite unique. Yeah. Um, it has uh, the flamethrower as its main weaponry, and it also has two machine guns to uh, shoot at um, infantry. And it has a unique, uh, the unique rule, so you can only have one, and it's unique in another way. It has a trailer, yeah. which means it uh, is the uh, first and only vehicle so far that uh, occupies three squares when you're playing gridded, which will make it a bit more difficult to move around. It uh, could be stuck in certain places, uh, I guess. And uh, for the point cost, 10. Uh, so if you compare this to, I think uh, a good comparison would be like uh, the Flam Luther, for example. Uh, its 2 is a tank 5, it has one more hit point and it has double blast on its flamethrower instead of single blast. But the Flam Luther is 13 points. So with that in mind, I think this feels like a fair compromise. Uh, yeah, then of course I have to add, add some small things. Um, the Flam Luther is a VK walker. So yeah, it's better than anything the Germans had. But we also know that the crocodile way way out fought any flamethrower that the Axis had in real war. So the crocodile should beat actually anything that the Germans have. Uh, the, th- when... the thing is that the Flamluther actually has two flamethrowers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Charm, but, so. yeah, yeah. So, so it's it is something that weren't in the World War Two. So it's but it's. You have to think about that a little. And also uh, the Euphrates, uh, not the Euphrates, but the uh, proper crocodile uh, went 100 yards, 100 meters. That is quite a long way. So range two, mm mm-mm. Okay, it's three in uh, width or length. And if they were going three with the range, it will take up all the board. with. (laughs) So I, I understand the playability text, but I hope the Brits... Flamethrower is a type uh, three in range, even if it means more, more point costs. Also, uh, there's a little bit, there's something special with this one, and this also makes the crook. Why I like the Euphrates even more, and why I think it's good that it has range too. Uh, the flamethrower on the Euphrates one is not the actual one that the Brits had, because the flamethrower is in the front of the tank and it shoots out. Uh, because the, the, the flame uh, was sh- propelled under the tank and came up in the front of the tank through a, a different... So uh, the U- Brits didn't have that type of flamethrower. Mm. That is uh, mm. something the, the, uh, the, cu- the occult has done themselves. Mm. So this is a retrofit, which makes it even better. Uh, you see, it's not a proper crocodile. It is mm. a mixed crocodile, <laughs> so it's even better that... So It's an alligator. Yes, <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> no, so, but... Um, uh, and then I know people like me get flipped because we want extra rules for where will you hit it. Uh, we know that the tank uh, trailer could take heavy shooting, but was very much more fragile than the tank. So mm-hmm. the tank was, you had to use the tank to protect the the uh, uh, the trailer if you were fighting other tanks mm-hmm. all of a sudden. And you could fight other tanks because the uh, yes. the gun that was on the crocodile is a very formidable gun. Mm-hmm. So, but I'm not. I'm going a little bit, perhaps too much off the grid here. But just to I mean, show, to, I'm to so me, passionate about the crocodile. Yeah, I, I I agree with you for the most part. But I also understand that I mean, in dust, uh, things needs to be streamlined and and simple. Uh, so uh, I guess that is kind of what they went for here, and and that's okay with me. Uh, Personally, I think I would like to have seen, I mean, maybe something extra, because right now, as it is, the trailer just makes it one square bigger, just slightly bigger. And then, so true. And that's it, basically. Yeah, it, it mm. could have done 
something more i agree yeah i think so maybe i don't know give it some like salvo or mm-hmm. yeah. give it the explode rule so when it dies it explodes in an inferno i don't know something like that give it one positive rule and something negative maybe i don't know yeah, yeah. Uh, i'm so down with simplicity that's why we love dust so i have no problem with them doing the card as they it is uh, i'm just saying I, I am aware that they could also have flipped it and gone with, as you say, more rules for the... Because this one, it's such a special vehicle, it could be even more special rules on it. But then you should have a card like the length of my arm, and that would just be silly. So, of <laughs> yeah. course, I yeah. know. It's, uh, yeah. it's passion. It's passion, yeah. yes. Okay. It is. But it, nevertheless, it is a cool tank, and we will hopefully see more ver- versions of it in the future. So yeah, I will shame any cult players I will come up against who hasn't uh, one of these. I will call them names. I will ir- I will ridicule them. So just uh, it, it's nothing. Per- yes, it is personal. If you play <laughs> with us and you don't have this, then you're. Ah, uh, shame you're on you. You're doing shame it wrong. Yes, yeah. you're doing it wrong. I think I already ordered mine, though. <laughs> yes, I knew I could count on you. I, I knew I was among friends here. I mean, it's... Okay, so uh, let's talk about the absolute latest release. Uh, yes, that please. was a week ago, as we record this, uh, the so-called Wave 11. This is a big uh, IJN, the Japanese Navy, uh, release. So it's the Ninjas, standalone, in Prime Premium or Model Kit versions. It's the Tengu slash Enenra, so you mm. can get that in Prime Premium <laughs> or Model Kits. And, of course, it's the Dice Pack for mm. the Japanese as well. There's been some talk about the Dice Pack, actually. Uh, yeah. they, they the specific color choices yeah. they've made, because they are... They, in some cases, uh, they can be a little bit hard to read. It's kind of sand-colored dice with a red infill. Yeah. And uh, at, at least for some people that uh, have... Uh, nice that, that, yeah. yeah, and especially some people who have uh, some certain types of color blindness yeah. can have a bit of difficulty mm-hmm. uh, reading them. It seems, right. but I guess you could fill them in with a black marker or something, yeah. <laughs> so, or white. Yeah, so it's red it, and white. It is a bit. Yeah. I, it is a bit of a strange um, kind yeah, of. Yeah, I haven't choice. seen them in person uh, mm-hmm. yet, so uh, I'm, I, I don't really know. But uh, to me, it feels like. Japanese dice shouldn't they be like white or like cream yeah. with red symbols or something? Yeah, I was kind of imagining that as well, but I think they kind of want to save that maybe for the Japanese army. Yeah, it maybe. could be like that. But and, and the visualization of them are super. I think they are hot. I mean, the way they are, it's nothing wrong with them. But of course, if certain type of eyesights have problem reading them. It's, of course, tragic, but uh, I, I truly understand why they went this way, because I feel we're still in uh, in the Middle East, uh, mostly, so it's a natural thing, and we everyone else has... It's the first one that has sand and a color. I mean, everyone else has just sand for their dices, uh, the Axis, uh, the SSU, and the Allied, so it is a step up it's more bling <laughs> <laughs> more yeah, bling for your buck yeah. 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 yeah so I like it but it's of course unfortunate yeah if it's and the final release uh, in this pack is the Middle Eastern House number one also available in model kit and premium and this is something that me personally I've been looking forward to a while because this oh, yeah. is the first in what seems to be a whole line of new scenery kits. Oh yeah. And they look so cool and in fact we actually have one of them oh, right yeah. here. Yes. Mm. So it's kind of a audio live unboxing here. We haven't actually uh, looked at this before. Um I think it's going to be really cool to do because um just to get a feel for how this looks. If you haven't seen it, go in and check it out on the uh, on the Dust game site. Um, because this, um, at first glance, this reminds me a lot of the old uh, Thor Miniatures uh, MDF uh, houses mm-hmm. that they yeah, made. Yeah. It's the same kind of style. Uh, but this is instead made in resin, I think. Yeah, it's resin. Okay, so live opening. Yeah, so... We 
uh, yeah, Dust see, War a Journal big, first. Yeah, <laughs> it's a it's a really big piece, and everything is more or less just put together uh, from the start. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Ooh, this looks this really is... nice. And uh, yeah, uh, what they don't show you in uh, in the picture is that it's basically just two pieces. It's the main uh, building and it's the roof. It's a single removable piece. And there is some small uh, doors um, as well that you can put on. This, yeah, this looks really, really cool. This doesn't feel like resin. That's, it doesn't feel like they're, they're the other resin that they've done. Um, this seems more plastic-like uh, to my yeah. uh, touch, at least. And just to uh, make it clear to the uh, listeners, Johannes was actually holding this with cramps in his hand when we <laughs> were just drooling from afar. Now Magnus has the, the opportunity to touch it, and he's he's doing that. I tell you, uh, he's yes, doing it. And it's touching it all over. <laughs> yeah, this is a very very nice kit. Yeah. Oh, it's my turn now. Yes, I was actually just uh, going around filling up the coffee in our mugs. If anyone wondered what <laughs> the running water sound in the background was, I'm sorry for that. But we just need the coffee this evening, mm -hmm. and this is this is just. Uh, do you smell that, listeners? <laughs> uh, it's. Uh, I, I love can, the smell I, of resin in the evening. Yeah. <laughs> Can I, can I lick it just once, <laughs> just, just in the corner? No, I'm sorry, I won't. I'm sorry. Uh, no, th this is this is very good, and it's so great that it's in line in some aspects with the Thor Miniatures thing, because those of us that bought a Thor Miniatures buildings now can buy this, and it doesn't look out of shape. Yeah. Uh, it just it, slots in right yeah. next to it, and th this is also this will also work great uh, with the existing range of those. Uh, damaged buildings and the cultist mm -hmm. buildings oh, and the oh, statues yeah. and everything so it's uh, yeah uh, one little thing one uh, easily marks is that it's two level of um, uh, roofs you could say uh, it's two oh it's a little ladder as well oh how sweet uh, but but it made, uh, when you lift the roof it comes off like almost a mini tower on one part or one square and the other square is just a plain floor so to speak when you look at it from on top uh, if you have miniatures standing on that uh, uh, roofed place yeah. then they might fall off because they have no um, no support, no, support, sides, no barriers no. on the sides the the tower building part it has that uh, um, what do you call it? The rails uh, that uh, they can stand in, and they can they're kept in place, so to speak. Uh, that would perhaps be something to think about next time, just to have a little bit of a of a uh, interior. Yes, just some, so it's easier some, to some uh, kind of rim or something yeah. just to keep the menis in there. Because I'm thinking, my point. So you have to be careful when you're <laughs> removing if if there are uh, units on the on the uh, roof there yeah that's true so if you have a fierce and adrenaline packed game and you're like me who can't just t sit still you know have that little uh, almost ad hd or whatever you call you know i i can see myself flipping this roof off and my uh, hopefully rangers then go flying a little bit extra <laughs> to get some extra charge distance or something but uh, i think if you buy this house you should have an extra charge if you have rangers on top and you just like whoo, there we go now sorry i'm just being a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek there it's a wonderful wonderful building uh i could see i, I my, my wallet won't um, agree but i could easily see myself spending a lot of uh, money on on a few of these it is kind of a pricey kit um <laughs> it is i have to i have to acknowledge that yeah, it, it does cost money, but I mean, look at what you how if you comp we should compare this to other, I mean, and I, I would H say the, the thing I really like about it mm -hmm. is that um, even though the details are very intricate, mm -hmm. it's still very simple. I mean, it's just two big pieces, two doors, and a ladder. Yeah. Which makes it incredibly simple to store, incredibly simple to transport, and simple yeah. to paint. So it's 
looks great, it has those aesthetics, but it still works practically as a gaming piece, and I really appreciate that. Not every manufacturer thinks of that aspect, I, f- yeah. I believe. Yeah, and even though it's a two-piece thing, as you say, every just side, every little thing is different. If you look at the battle it's, marks or the aging on this... Um, yeah, there's even detail in the y- interior. Yeah, so... so um, and also, it, 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 since it has no floor, it's good because you see the dot when you remove the, the roof, if you want that. Or you get the opportunity to build your own roof, uh, or own floor. Sorry, I'm ashamed of myself. Uh, you can do your own floor there and do all the special things like Magnus is a pro on. So, I mean, that building in Magnus' hands, a few weeks later, the interior would look, well... I'm sorry he's in the room, I is. I didn't mean to praise you, Magnus. You're a shit. I am not. <laughs> no. Yeah, okay. uh, yeah, it looks super nice. I'm not sure what I would do with it, actually, because it looks so nice as it is. Um, and I haven't really built any of these... Um, uh, like deserty tables, anyways. So uh, it's not really your style. Um, <laughs> it might be in the future. Uh, mm. I have some ideas what I would like to do, but I haven't done uh, really anything mm. deserty yet. So uh, yeah, but it's yeah, it's a super nice kit. Definitely, and I, I could easily see some wooded floors, sand in the inside, perhaps blown in some, uh, some uh, barrels, some uh, crates. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, combine that with uh, the uh, objective market crates. I mean, the small ones with the, you could just have someone in a corner there. It would just poof, explode. I mean, and I don't mean the ammo now. I, I, I know it. I know it's fake. Okay, I know it's fake. It's just plastic. I mean, yeah. Well, let's go over yeah, and please. just leave the leave the house behind. <laughs> Lodda has left the building and we're going to <laughs> some previews. No um, house will left behind us. <laughs> because uh, Greg from Dust USA kindly shared uh, some kind of previews on what we can expect from Wave 12 and Wave 13. We don't really know exactly when these will be released. There was no release this week, actually. And I think that's because um, it's Chinese New Year. Has just started, yeah. so they kind of. I, I don't. I don't think they want to be, do some big releases just just prior to all the workers going on holiday for almost a month. So these are might be uh, a bit time before they are released. But what we can look forward to are the uh, HQ boxes for the Desert Scorpions and the MDAC. Some yeah. really cool stuff in here. Uh, in the Desert Scorpion box, we have uh, the Command Squad. We have Greg and Issy. We have Marek. Really looking forward to getting that mini. And we got Bullseye. Mm-hmm. So one of those uh, pre- previously only kind of special limited edition um, kind of miniatures that has been a bit hard to get hold of yeah for some people so it's really good to see that coming being available yeah i think this box is going to be very popular very popular but definitely uh, i i see myself buying it very quickly um it it has so much potential i just it, it, he's such a charming little dude that bullseye I, just the way he's posturing and the way I mean, it's just uh, one of those you want to have in your uh, uh, in your army definitely yeah and he's uh, one of the kind of sort of main characters in the um, in the operation hellgate book yeah and 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 not to reveal what's happening but we can say an important character for me at least when i was playing last year seems to be hitting it a little bit hard, uh, you could say. <laughs> so I, I can see Bullseye taking perhaps the place. In Carrying future. on the flame. Yeah, something mm-hmm. like that. But yeah. I'm, I'm just, I don't want to be ruining it's anyone's much, experience yeah. from the hell Yeah, game, that's good. Uh, when it comes to the Endark HQ box, we again got the Command Squad, we got Rommel, we got Tina, and we got a new uh, hero, the Panzermeister. Mm. Yes. This guy looks really cool. We have some uh, bit of a preview of uh, his uh, card and his rules, but he has um, he has a laser pistol and he has um, he has the uh, ant stay down rule, if I remember correctly. 
And he has a new rule, uh, which we haven't seen before. Um, I, and uh, unfortunately, I don't remember from the, out of the top of my head what the rule was called. And we didn't have any uh, kind of hint at all of what the rule does. <laughs> so mm-hmm. <laughs> this is something completely new. <laughs> Yeah, and, and but what I know about the fluff, or what try, I think I remember about the fluff with him, is that he is the uh, isn't he the one who's the dead adversary to Panzer Prince? So now you can have those true Axis versus Axis <laughs> grudge, grudge matches. Ba- yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, so anyone playing this guy and Panzer Prince in the same army, fuck off, will you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's I'm just not, a no-no. I'm not sure about that because as. What I remember is that they are, yes, they are rivals, but mm-hmm. they also kind of compete. Like, who is the best Panzer Ace? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who who has the most uh, notches on their tank? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> or so on their, of course on their they walker. could be uh, in the same yeah. army. And, yeah, it's, yeah. It's and another thing that I uh, that I appreciate with this release also is that Panzermeister is also going to be released by himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, it, the preview picture shows only the premium uh, box so i don't know if that means that uh, it's going to be a premium only release for for that or if it's going to be available in primed as well mm-hmm. but that's that's good for people like me who've been playing mdac uh, since they were available and have all the other yeah. units already so that's probably the way i'm going to go with to get him by himself Next yeah. up, uh, yeah. he, he, sorry, I'm just flicking in there. Uh, is he's such an iconic person, also that uh, me who doesn't play Endak would like to buy him. And I also, okay, I have Tina, I have Rommel, I have the HQ, so I don't need the whole. So I really, really hope because he's such a special character that he's really going to be released, and preferably also in a model kit version for us that just wants him on our shelf. Uh, oh, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Next up, it's the uh, Alexei and Nadia mm-hmm. kit for the Spetsnaz. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. this is the, the Gatling and the Flamethrower versions of the Tropical KV-47. Yeah. So again, another solid kit. And uh, of course, getting both the weapon options in the primed or model kit version. Yeah. No complaints there. Definitely not. We know that 99% will play the Nadia, but just the fact that you have that option and it is an interesting combo with the because you have two machine guns, the small and the bigger one. So it's it's fun to play around with and one of one of the Alexei is not bad to have in your army. That's, that's so it's a, it's a good support unit, I would say. Definitely. Yeah, I've said that before. I'm always happy when I'm playing you and seeing that you are not fielding an Alexei. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously don't like that guy. <laughs> no, 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 but now you're thinking of the Anatoly, the Facer one. I mean, not the Facer one, the Tesla one. That's yeah, the one. That one too. Okay. I didn't, sorry, sorry listeners, I didn't know I had put the fear in Magnus with the Alexei because I only played him, I think, once with them. I, must, I, I should have remembered that game better. <laughs> but I know how you fear those, uh, those Tesla walkers and I, and I love playing them as well. It, it, but uh, I, I mean, uh, with the Alexei, if you look at the stats, yeah. I mean, if you get in range with everything, mm-hmm. then it is 12 dice versus even both uh, uh, soldier one and soldier two, yeah. and it's it's still eleven dice against soldier three. Yeah, and it, it, I can see that going with the heavy grenadiers yeah. against that. Mm-hmm. That's not yeah, fun. Yeah, I think yeah, I think I've I've been playing axes against you when you mm-hmm. feel it. I, I I'm not exactly sure about the list, but I probably feel it either uh, the heavy grenadiers or mm-hmm. more light maybe endak units. And yeah, I don't like them. my infantry. Don't like that guy. No, it's, it's, <laughs> so. it's appreciated. So, so please go, don't give up the the day job. <laughs> <laughs> Next in this list is the Ryu, the mm. uh, Mark II and Mark III for the Japanese Navy, and uh, this is actually a, a, a unit that's been available before in a way Mm -hmm. there's been Mm -hmm. a model kit version of this uh, walker in 135th scale Mm -hmm. (laughs) available this is basically the the wotan actually it's the exact same model Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, repurposed for the imperial japanese navy Mm -hmm. but uh, it comes with both the laser versions uh, as we are 
very familiar with from the X's, <laughs> but also with the big twin rail guns. Mm. Yeah, so that's going to be a, a big, big hitter for the Japanese, I think, when this arrives. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's one of those units that you just you want to put on the board, you know. It's uh, ah. And it's going to be hard uh, to to choose between them. It depends on what you can f- what you're facing and what you're fielding uh, beside it because um, personally I tend to go for the laser uh, because of the amount of dice mm-hmm. that you're guaranteed to get some damage in. Mm-hmm. But with the railgun then if you get those hits, you do a tremendous amount of damage. So that's yeah. kind of the playstyle choice, or if you are somehow... Yeah, they are both very interesting choices, yeah. actually. And uh, yeah, the, the railgun can be so devastating, but if you're unlucky... Mm-hmm. But yeah, we said that before. If you're unlucky, <laughs> it's not going to do shit. <laughs> that, that's so, so true, like... <laughs> And yeah. also, uh, I mean, the Vortan, it's such a wonderful... I mean, I, I was playing the Bloitkreutz a few tournaments back uh, up in Linköping, and, okay, it was totally the wrong tournament to bring Vortans because uh, we had the, all the weather on that one, so they didn't see shit, and they were just <laughs> totally useless. But just the f- possibility then for me to place two Vortans on the board, it was... It's it's a it's a kick. I mean, it's the power kick. I mean, two volt. You fear one, even if it doesn't have a, a pilot in it. You see how people start to, I mean, pull back and start to, uh, and then you put another one on top yeah. of that. And it's like <laughs> so. I mean, I, I, just having that uh, re, uh, real and then put another one up. Yeah, <laughs> it is a walker that commands respect. Yeah. <laughs> In a short sentence, what I was trying to convince, the convene, convey, convey, convey. I was coming. I'm yeah. sorry. But if that's not enough, we also got the Avatar of Cthulhu, yes. both in uh, probably in primed model kit and premium versions. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, we've seen this guy before. <laughs> we talked about him when he was released with the limited edition resin version. This is uh, this is a guy that's going to just mess things up for the opponent. <laughs> and uh, I've been kind of looking forward to when when this guy is released and when uh, especially when uh, Rasputin and the command squad for the cultists are released. I'm going to experiment with just putting in as many, just this guy, and as many of the small guys as possible, and just wreak havoc. It doesn't really matter if I do take any <laughs> objectives or not. I'm just going to mess stuff up. And you're gonna, you're gonna explode, basically. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I understand that. Uh, it's. Uh, I. I so understand if people who like the mythos go ape shit when they look at him. Uh, and I, I look forward to blowing him up <laughs> a long way away from my troops. That's yeah. <laughs> This is basically what you bring the Wotan for. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> or the, the you, in the, that case. The two Wotans. Yeah. Because yeah. you need those 15 hits. So you Not have, if you're Roger, then you no, probably no. only need one. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, yeah, because he's going to roll five dice and it's going to be 10 hits. Uh, and then he's going to do it again. <laughs> so, But he's a special guy. Yeah. <laughs> And of course, uh, but the final item on this list, the Middle Eastern House number two, the uh, two floor version of this building. Um, really, really cool. Uh, oh, missed that one in the list. We're going to talk about that uh, right after we talk about the house. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, the Middle Eastern House number two, also looking house. forward to this. This looks amazing as well. Definitely. <laughs> And it's also so good because it keeps expanding. It's another square. It's three squares now. Yeah. The roof. So kind of like the, an L shape. Yeah. To it. Which is always good, of course, uh, being me. <laughs> and of course, it's growing on the height as well. The the uh, the roof. I think it was another extension there, if I am looking correctly. So it's a two level. It's two storage high. Yeah, with a little uh, like a little staircase mm-hmm. there. Yeah. 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 Th- this definitely looks. Like uh, a house, this looks like a, like a, a, a domicile basically, mm-hmm. uh, much more than um, before when they had those little uh, one square buildings. Mm-hmm. They looked more like like little huts or storage yeah. areas. This looks like something that some person might live in. Yeah, definitely. 
but, but also so do the yeah. two uh, square uh, building so uh, with with the two huts uh, one two square and this you have a formidable little town there on a two yeah, map I, I game could, so i can definitely if we're talking about uh, like uh, painting and building up this, i could kind of see myself putting up like a little clothes line with some stuff hanging from it and uh, mm -hmm. like some details like that just to make it a bit more alive basically yeah. and it, this is so wonderful to see this line of terrain that they're putting out because uh, you know way back when when they had those uh, Svergrod houses we knew it were some troubles getting them sold in the amount that Fancy Flight forced the studio to produce, so we know they were very were frustrated about terrain. And I think even one of them, the guys from the studio, said, "We're never going to do terrain again mm. because it's just cost us too much." Mm. And fair is fair. If it's uh, a big minus in your account, you don't want to do terrain. But now they have started to produce, and it's getting. I mean, the pillars were good, but this is another step, and they're just expanding. Oh, it's just. Sorry, I, I, you know me, I'm a sucker like you two for nice game boards and this is, makes it so easy for everyone to get that super high quality game board. Yeah, I agree. Um, totally. Yeah, just spray them beige and then wash them with a flesh wash or something like that and you you don't have to do more, you can do more, it, but just that would make yeah it's super easy to make them look good. Yeah. And if you put in just a little bit Bit, little bit of more work they will look amazing mm. so so yeah big hats off come on Jonas off with your hat no. <laughs> <laughs> not at this time okay. all right so uh, yeah the one that I missed putting in the list in, in the show notes uh, the mercenary record demolisher and obliterator kit I can't believe I missed this because no. I'm a big fan of the mercenaries yeah and this is a f fantastic kit uh, of course like all the mercenaries it's uh, kind of salvaged from uh, the other blocks so this is the tropical kv47 but with some different weaponry so you get in this kit uh, everything you need to build the wrecker or the demolisher which is basically the same thing yeah it's it's a tropical auto yeah and, and it, this no, makes uh, the obliterator is the auto yeah 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 well yeah that was course, what i was uh, coming yeah, to sorry yeah, yeah mm. the, the wrecker and the demolisher yeah, yeah, yeah those sorry. are basically the same as yeah. the, the the one is is the special version that's uh, driven by Luisa. Yeah, sorry. And sorry. the obliterator is the one with the uh, the, the RPG mm, uh, yeah. mounted arms. And yeah. And that Great kit. really gets me excited because this is what I've been wanting for the Mercs. I know they have the other one with the recoilless ones. And I'm sorry, but that doesn't do it for me for some reason. I've started to come to grips with having two recoilers on the, the trucks for the, the Scorpions. For for some reason that works for me but the other wa the walkers I, I, I there's nothing wrong with them but it just didn't was it wasn't the walkers i wanted for my mercs mm. to take out heavy duty opponents mm. but this one really tingles my bell and i really yeah. this is the the first unit for the mercenaries that's actually a dedicated anti tank yeah. version uh, that actually has the potential to do some serious damage to heavy machinery mm -hmm. uh, so it fills an important role if you are playing an all mercs army definitely yeah and i bet it has damage resilience because it's on the kv chassis and then it's the, got the machine gun and you i i'm sorry listeners you i know i've been ramping on this before but just the fact that you have two weapon lines makes it such great versatility and you can also tank you don't have to reload those frigging uh, anti-tank guns to try to fend off the whatever coming at you you mm -hmm. can use the machine gun uh, and backing away or reloading at the same time it's just this is what a walker has to do f to get me excited and it does it so uh, and i just two of those hunting those pestilence mythos creatures <laughs> it gets fun you know it, mm -hmm. it puts fun in the game uh, Sorry. Yeah, I I have nothing to add. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go over to the Wave 13 releases. We don't really know yet when these are going to uh, 
actually be available to purchase. But I can't imagine it's going to be that long of a wait. And this is something that looks to be worth waiting for, at least if you are planning to play Rangers or, uh, <laughs> or Fallschirmjäger, because it's the Rangers and Luftwaffe army boxes. And unfortunately, uh, the, uh, the pictures we got here on, uh, on the boxes are quite low resolution. It's quite hard to see exactly what units are, uh, are added here. Um, but but I, I'll, I'll bet a big money that it's the machine gun guys and the anti-tank guns and the that would make uh, kind of sense. Outside, uh, yeah. it, it does for the rangers. It does look like it's the heavy rangers, yeah, which yeah. also makes yeah. sense because it goes together with the heavy rangers starter box. Definitely. Um, and uh, we can also see that it's the it's a mortar squad yeah. and it's a bulldog in the army box there yeah so it looks like a really really good kit there for the Luftwaffe you, you but, also get oh, sorry you, interrupting more. you there yeah yeah shouldn't it it should be a third unit if since it's an army box yeah. It should be a third unit. That's what really, really uh, yeah. makes it interesting. Yeah, there is. There, there's, I think there is. It's very hard to say, but it, it looks like there is two of the heavy squads mm. and one water squad. And the yeah, bulldog. there might be a mortar squad over there. To yeah. me, I'm just getting the image of a lot of sheep standing there. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So then, then, they, like, then the what? water squad are doing their job. They <laughs> go, they're not being spotted by the enemy. Yeah. <laughs> they're hiding in plain sight. Yeah, exactly. I, uh, <laughs> and I want battleships. I actually have battleships <laughs> under the table. I'm playing with my daughter. Just the side note. Yeah. yeah, that's so... The battleships. Yeah. A wonderful game. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going B4, totally off talk. my favorite vitamin. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> please, please continue. Before I All right, the Luftwaffe it. army box. Uh, again, we don't know exactly what units uh, is included. It's the two of the uh, Fallschirmjäger squads, we can see that plainly, and one of the support squads. And this is one of those um, kind of trucked, um, those wheeled support weapons. Yeah. So it's one of those. I, it's hard to set, tell um, exactly which one it is, but it's also the Geist. Yeah, yeah. This is quite exciting because I think this is the first time that you've actually been able to purchase the Geist uh, by itself. Because the other other way to get it was to buy the model kit uh, that you could use to build either the Geist or the Hexe. Mm -hmm. um, this is the first time you can build by the Geist by itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. that's uh, it's also very formidable. Uh, I mean, I love it. It's, it's like the uh, Spetsnaz when they get the invader, and you. This is really putting a lot of uh, hit power at once for the one when you buy the army. You really get there. Like this is a cool army. I got a cool thing in the beginning, and I still. Uh, well, you buy a cool thing at the same time as you build up your army. I mean, it's not just. I'm just not just buffing my. Oh, sorry. I'm just not buffing my army. I'm actually also getting the cool stuff at yeah. the same time. I mean, and that, that's what I love about... Uh, I'm yeah. sorry for my bell there. I will put, switch it on soundless. <laughs> yeah, so really, really cool looking army boxes. Definitely. So that's it for the news and the previews. So let's go over to uh, kind of a new segment that I chose to call the talking point. Because I've been thinking recently about the rule set for Dust 1947. There's been, um, since the rules were released in the, uh, the autumn of 2016, there's been quite a lot of changes to it, both in the Arata and FAQ document. There's also been a lot of clarifications from other sources, uh, like on Facebook and such. There have been new rules released with uh, new units and with the expansion books. And my question here is, is it time for a new edition of the main rulebook? What do you guys think? It's an interesting question. And I mean, most miniatures games, they release new editions of the rules, you know, every few years. So that's a kind of natural way. Rules need to be updated and, and gone through uh, every once in a while. Personally, I don't think dust is quite there yet it's been uh, two and a half years something like that yeah um, and there hasn't been too much released yet i think i think the, the, the game is in a kind of phase now where 
they are fleshing out a lot of the factions. So I could see a new edition come out, I don't know, at least a year from now, probably maybe two years or something. I'm thinking maybe somewhere around when the Vril will appear, because that will probably mean a lot of new rules, a lot of kind of development. I think the game will change a bit. In I mean, in several areas, both model-wise and rule-wise and kind of the feel of it. It's so true. Uh, really new rules might just be more a- adequate than hopefully in December 2020 when the real hopefully arrives or at least they hope they will be able to put it out then. Um, but also we were playing uh, the games here uh, a few days ago, me and Johannes, and we realized we had to have both the rule book and the Condor and the uh, Hellgate book out just to check everything that was happening. And the Errata documents. Yeah. So that's four different sources. And also, of course, since we were playing and trying out and testing the uh, rules on the scenarios for Nordic, we had to have that document. Okay, well, Okay, that's not the studio's fault. That's our (laughs) own fault, so to speak. But so we were juggling five documents and perhaps one could mash it in because I I could pay for, even though I have Condor and I have Hellgate, I think I could pay for an updated rule uh, supplement, a rule uh, book with easy, manageable uh, terrain. or kind of reference and stuff. Yeah. Like that. And that's basically, that is that is actually uh, the exact thing. That's what sparked this, uh, this line of thought for me. <clears throat> and I'm not really asking for a complete rewrite of the rules or uh, no, just no. a lot of changes. I'm just looking for uh, a concise and uh, just simplified way to find everything at once. Mm-hmm. Just basically dust 1947 revised edition rather than a completely new edition of the game yeah i hope seriously hope they don't fuck with these rules because they there are a few things of course we want to tweak but those are like errata things so hopefully i hope that we will never have a new rule set from these ones because there's no frigging way no frigging need to change the rules these are good rules they work splendidly they could live forever but of course we there will be needs to reprint the rule book because the rule book will be is it will be obsolete soon so to speak because there are few tweaks and tweaks and new rules as you say magnus and new blocks coming mm. in and new skills and stuff like that and that's also mm. a point if you are a completely new player to the game yeah and you buy the rule book and there are there are stuff in the rule book that's just don't apply anymore. I mean, like the rules for height advantage and the rules for how flame weapons work in Gridded, those work completely differently if you read them in the Errata document. And if you don't know about that, yeah. and then you go and play against someone else and you're going to be completely surprised by yeah. it. <laughs> so that's kind of also a point that uh, kind of would make an issue. So uh, maybe a, a solution would be um, if there's not time, uh, at least yet, to reprint the rulebook uh, in an updated format like that, or uh, just make a new edition, maybe have a an online-based consolidated rules document that just matches everything and puts in all these updates and changes to the rules. Yeah, that, that could be one way of doing it, but... Uh, at the same time, th- this kind of stuff it takes a lot of time and effort to actually do. It's not as easy as many people think. No, no. Uh, and I think the studio are kind of busy at the moment, especially with the the release of the Japanese and uh, you know all the work that we know that they are doing with the Vril. Um, so I don't know. I think yeah, if possible, it would be great if they could mash everything together. Uh, in an online format, sure. In a, but yeah, a completely new rule book, even if it's not that different. Uh, I would be very surprised if it comes out like before the real, actually. Uh, I think it's somewhere like two years away from now. Yeah, I understand all, all everything you say and it's totally logical. But I mean, also, 
couldn't it be perhaps a way for them to make a little more money? Because some of us are such uh, strange people. We would buy a new rule book if they just changed the cover, just to have that <laughs> new picture with some new uh, IGN models in the in the front instead, or perhaps another artwork. Just it's it, it, mm, well, uh, one could think that perhaps with some small adjustments. And perhaps even giving it away to someone who knows mm. these things that are, I mean, they shouldn't do it themselves. They they have, they should um, be able to just give the rota document, and uh, the ship to someone a printer who just came do it for them and just. I, I don't know. You, you have to be very careful with that. Just think mm. about some some of the other known companies. They get a lot of flack be- because they release new editions uh, too often. And even Dust have already have a lot of that because there have been several iterations like Tactics and Warfare and people are confused about wh- which one yeah. is which. And, it, you know, releasing another, it it will uh, make some people angry, basically. So, And th- that's mm. basically what I, I think what you can do is like if you are going to release, like you said, a, a slightly updated rulebook, mm. then just mark it with instead of u- using an edition, mark it with a print year. Yeah. In in a very uh, that this is the rule book for 2019. Yeah. Or, or, so or and that's uh, so you can see that uh, whatever rule book you you have, this the base rules are always the same. Yeah. But they might have been updated uh, in specific areas or certain details. Mm-hmm. So there might be stuff that have changed. And I think that in itself is not really a new concept uh, to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So. You maybe have to be aware of it, but um, that would k- kind of make it more easy to mm. just spot it immediately. To say, "Oh, you get you get that." Yeah. Rule so, a, as a player, it would be great to have uh, that kind of consolidated, like new rule book or or updated rule book. But yeah, like I said, it takes a lot of time and effort to do it. Mm. And if they spend that time and effort, they probably want to print it so they can sell it yeah, and make course. some money. Yeah. So it's. It's a very difficult situation, so um, yeah, I, I I think we'll of course see an updated version, but uh, a little bit later on. Mm-hmm. I, and I just want to put it out there as well, but I think they could perhaps, I mean, just the logo of Wise just have the same front, but and have the same characters if Paolo could do another artwork that is, and just have them in a little bit more summary attire and then you can print it like summer edition something like and then you know that because we are now in the summer isn't aren't we 1947 summer that's mm. where we are now so fluff wise it would also be and then they can still print 1947 winter edition uh, <laughs> later on when the they june need to do... edition the july edition yeah. the august uh, edition yeah, I mean, I mean, because that's where we i mean we, we just follow yeah. the fluff so it's not it's not uh, and uh, <laughs> Uh, when, and then you see it, it's the same front, but just a different image. You understand that it's the same rules as we were talking about. Well, yeah, of course. And then we get to 1948, and then we get yeah. to... <laughs> of course. It, I mean, it, 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 couldn't that be really, really nice? Because like, uh, it's almost like, you know, it's the swimsuit edition of the 1948. <laughs> I mean, we get the new... I, 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 I know new. Paolo is, would yeah. love to do a swimsuit edition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, I'm just saying it could be... Um, yes, well, maybe, let, let's start anyway, a petition. Hey, <laughs> hey, you, you, know what, you know what they should do? They should do a calendar. Yeah. Mm, oh, yes, yes. When, when, I mean, Paul has, must have so much great artwork out there that, and we have all those great posters. I mean, or even just print, do the posters, but like a calendar yeah. for next year. Uh, please, uh, it, it should be... Easy as pie, and just be able to be selling at the uh, immediately. Uh, that should be easy work, uh, and because uh, a lot of us want to buy every poster they put out, but it's also an economic uh, thing. A little bit cheaper, have them as a calendar. It, it wouldn't deter me from buying the posters in the in the long run. Um, mm, yeah, I mean, it's an interesting sure. idea. Yeah. All right, so that's it for for uh, that talking point. Let's go over and 
get into the mailbag. So let's go over to our mail call section. We got a lot of uh, questions because we didn't really have time to go through everything last episode. So we're going to take a bunch of that as well as the new questions. So let's just get right into it so we get through it because there's a lot of really interesting and cool questions. Yeah, and we might also mention that we will probably not be able to do all the questions this time as well. So we have to come back to something. So don't, don't feel bad if we don't mention your specific question because we got a lot of them both this time and the last time so yeah we never intentionally ignore a question we always answer every question in one or the other way it's just that well we could be here all night but you guys want to go at home sometimes <laughs> yeah, but we are of course are w- also thankful for all the questions yeah. and uh, i mean they are super interesting and uh, yeah they give a lot of interesting discussions so thank you all uh, guys out there and girls who send us these amazing questions top of the hat of you definitely so f- our first question comes from christian hoel and uh, christian is asked why are you guys playing grid based instead of freeform i would love to hear the arguments for and against from your experience uh, well basically we play mostly grid based at this time at least uh, for convenience I would say it's uh, it's a way to avoid arguments of the kind of well I can't see that guy no you can't he's behind the tree no he doesn't I can see his our elbow or stuff like that and there, it's not that that kind of stuff uh, just shows up all the time when you're playing freeform but it shows up in at least in tournaments uh, a bit too often to uh, just start to make a little bit of an issue. For, for me personally, uh, I mean, I've been playing uh, almost all versions of Dust over mm. the years. I started with the Fancy Flight Revised Edition, basically the day that one dropped. Um, and in the beginning, I was actually very skeptical. Uh, I was trying this game out and I, I tried to wrap my head around this with squares because I came from... from um, kind of a freeform background I've played a lot of games workshop games and and uh, yeah quite a lot of that type of game uh, and I couldn't really I don't know I couldn't really appreciate this this kind of rigid uh, play mat surface that we played with you know with these squares but then I started to see all the pros with it how easy how fast it is how much discussions that you could just forego oh is this one millimeter inside my range or one millimeter outside my range i bet almost all people out there have been in those types of discussion especially if you are playing in a tournament that those types of situations can really at least to me really make make or break the experience Uh, if you are playing against an opponent who have different opinions, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, it, it could easily become a very bad game. Definitely. But with the squares, those issues just disappear. Mm. So for me, yeah, like you said, Johannes, it's for the simplicity, for the uh, speed of the game. To me, the, the, the grid-based game is sort of elegant. It, it definitely is, and I, I just started reminding you, I mean, a game I had going off the grid, so to speak, when my opponent is shooting at me and he's in range, uh, and then I'll retaliate. None of, he hasn't moved, I haven't moved, um, but for some reason my gun, who is the same range, doesn't reach his model, and his were reaching mine, uh, and there was just no getting around that so it it was just one of those i mean you don't want that um to me also i mean as you know guys i I started playing tabletop games with rogue trader uh to me the natural way to play a miniature game is non-gridded i love the flow of a figure when you can like move him almost like a i mean computer simulation around bends and up and down and move and and i love multiple rules and multiple uh, tables to rule to roll on and like i mean if you have a d100 it's good i mean you have 100 effects on this roll i love those sort of thing 
played Battletech immensely off grid as well. But uh, in this day and age, when you're uh, you need a quick game, and let's face it, not everyone likes to play measuring unit uh, figure to figure to figure i mean all the measuring all the time consuming uh it's hard finding people who can take all that time to play a game and also to find the right play partner <laughs> basically because if you have a, a guy you play or a girl by all means uh that's that you're on the same wavelength with you're having fun you haven't you don't do this silly arguments did i is this leaf enough just to cover your troop and just oh sh fuck off i mean then i to me gridless is the best type of game ever and nothing can beat it but when you want to play new friends want people to come into the business uh, organization and under the playing community easy Everything that you said, Magnus, of course, also, and I mean, the easiness is to store it and just um, you don't you can do if you can if you can play a non gridded game with two D terrain. Of course, you can do that. You can just have buttons instead of soldiers as well, and you can because that's what you basically did in the, back in the old days. You had cardboard boxes and stuff like that. But I mean, what fun is that? I mean, so, but yeah. but a two D game with gr it's it works when you play gridded. It's another story. You can have beautiful printed mats uh, because you have the squares anyway, uh, but you can elevate it with beautiful terrain. So, the endless possibilities of the gridded game wins out. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it, when, when you play gridded. On 3D terrain, mm -hmm. to me, you get all the best parts of miniature gaming, basically, but you mm -hmm. cut out the bad parts. Yeah, the middleman. Yeah. <laughs> sort of, yeah. And, and, and that said, uh, I also feel that uh, apart from uh, a tournament setting where you have to play with a specific rule set, you all have to agree uh, how you're going to play. Outside of that, just do whatever you want. Yeah, there's of absolutely of no course. reason absolutely. to to just go one way or the other, and that's the beauty of Dust. The base rules are exactly the same for both versions. Yeah, yeah the base rules. Yeah, good of you to put that yeah. out, and you know I'm going to bite on it anyway. <laughs> because, uh, but I'm not going to. That's the, the thing. Yeah, play the base rule. Forget about everything else, and find that special person that you can play this off gridded with when no one is looking. Because it's a immense good game to yeah, play. It's, it's been a while now, but I mean, we have played Freeform a little bit here and there. And I, I can appreciate that. It, it becomes a little bit different because of the, um, uh, the, the different range, basically. So it's, it's an interesting, interesting version to play as well. Uh, for, for me, I mean, in, in a tournament setting, especially... Uh, uh, I don't know, I, I sometimes kind of get annoyed because, I mean, I work as a surveyor engineer, so I work with measuring and angles and that, like, every day. That's my job. <laughs> and sometimes I get a little bit upset when I see how bad people are at measuring stuff on the table. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I hear you. A lot of so people, much. they are really bad at doing this. Yeah. And they don't realize it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just working out a corner save sometimes just... I'm, I'm sorry, and I hope no one gets offended, but it can really piss me off. It's so fucking simple. Can't you see? It's a 45 <laughs> angle. God, man! Do you have to measure this with a laser pointer? But of course, they should, because they should enjoy the game. They should understand. Please continue, Magnus. I'm no, I, I was just saying that with <laughs> at least with the grid... You, you take a lot of that away. You don't yeah. have to measure. And if someone doesn't quite understand how it works, like if they are fairly new, mm. you can easily explain it because it's yeah. like it's fairly simple math and, and geometry. You can yeah. say, OK, this is the line and the line does not pass th through this corner. So therefore, yeah. But yeah, OK. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a sensitive yeah. option. Getting and upset, it, moving but, along. Uh, also, I'd like to add that we were always having a Swedish championship on non-gridded until they 
entered with a new expansion of the grid, non-gridded rules. And then when it were two types of non-gridded rules again, it was just, okay, we want to do this, but others want to play that. And you didn't get the consensus in the gaming community. It turned into a warfare game again. Some play it, they should enjoy it. It's nothing wrong with it. But you can't have the great uh, countryside tournaments when everyone needs to agree on what's what. So uh, that killed it for up, up until that year. We we had a Swedish championship in both ways of playing the game, mm -hmm. yeah. and I would have continued champion for that type of games as well, and I would have organized that. But now it's just pointless, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Well, so so <laughs> long. Quest, long answer to an important question because uh, yeah it is very di very diff different so let's go over to uh, our next question uh, Dave Smith asks uh, thought about uh, mercenaries best units best place to use them what factions do they complement best are there other units that do the same better well yeah in in most cases yes I mean that's kind of what the mercenaries were uh, at the start at least they were kind of there to to fill in a little bit of gaps in certain army builds and maybe for fluff reasons they are a bit they are a bit more nowadays um, but well uh, like for me for example uh, I use Luisa quite a, quite a lot mm -hmm. because she is uh, she's an officer hero uh, that you can use in any faction in any army uh, that's a very big bonus um, I haven't really played that much mercenaries. I don't own too many mercenaries. Uh, but I, th the feeling I get from them is that they have a little bit of everything. And now with the with the upcoming releases here, they will also have some, some anti-tank punch, which is kind of what they have been lacking. But other than that, they have a little bit of everything. And I mean, we know the, the, the it will come headquarters box and, and everything. So they are kind of well-rounded and I think it's more of a personal taste thing. What If you have a collection, but you lack something little, you can add just the mercenary, whatever it is that you want, uh, and try it out. Like you said, you can have this hero officer that you can fit in almost everywhere, anywhere. So, um, yeah, the, we, we are missing two things with the mercs. Uh, we're missing Amelia Earhart, of course. <laughs> um, man, did I watch an interesting uh, documentary that they actually think she was uh, taken by the Japs. Uh, she uh, she actually crash landed on an island, so they have now discovered uh, secret intelligence uh, information from. You sure she wasn't taken by the mythos? Uh, yeah, well, of course, in 1947, the mythos or the Vril has taken her. Of course, we know that, and we we champion she coming back in the source or something. But just the fact that actually she was put in a Japanese detention center. Uh, and uh, died in Japan, mm. uh, actually. So it's very fascinating. But but going off topic, we need a flyer for the uh, for the Mercs, of course. And it should be so much nice if we could just get one more infantry unit, something different, just something uh, as a regular squad. Because my daughter, she plays the game, she loves it, uh, but she only plays the girls, of course. She want to kick the boys' ass, so she only plays the Mercs, and she could use one more infantry squad because she don't want to put some mossy old boys from another army into her army. She wants to have and just one more infantry. But also the question in, 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 in at hand from Dave Smith here is, I would like to answer that the wrecker, I think you can't, that's just, everything is good with the mercs, but that is just super good to what it does. I'm actually a little bit surprised that no, not more people are playing the Wrecker as a complimentary because it's a really good hard hitter and it's even though it has no life it's with a damage resilient it's hard to kill yeah if, if I were to pick one unit so to speak I would probably say Emma the nurse <laughs> she is uh, she's very useful in a lot of armies yeah, uh, well, of course. But yeah, it's just one hero. So yeah. um, I don't know. Other units, 
it it really depends on on what you want from it, what you feel you are lacking in yeah, your and army. If you're so. if you're playing another another army, there are so much stuff you can do. I mean, you can have uh, Tanya is a great way to give another uh, unit damage resilience, or a mm-hmm. rather defensive tactics or damage resilience in in mm-hmm. cover. Uh, but that's a really useful ability. Yeah, if you want to buff mm. your infantry a bit, that is a good choice. If you are, for example, playing um, allies, maybe you want one or more of the walkers that have damage resilience. Just to have something that you uh, normally don't, don't have, have in the army. No. Mm. So, yeah, it, it really depends. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Right, next question comes from Bruce Ryder. Will we get to the Pacific Island soon? <laughs> well, probably not, I think. We've heard some rumblings about what's coming up in the next uh, expansion book. And uh, from what we've heard, it might be uh, a kind of more worldwide kind of thing. We're going to focus on several different locations instead of just one specific location as the... Uh, the most recent uh, scenario books, uh, the expansion books have have done. But it doesn't seem like we're going to the Pacific yet. It might be later on. Yeah, it would be suicidal for the studio to go to the Pacific now because as we were talking and giddy about beforehand, they are releasing all the beautiful Middle East houses now. And they can't start to produce these and then switch to the Pacific because then all the investment, why would we buy these houses? We need to fight at least a year, year and a half in the Middle East before we get... Same time, though, I know people are building their Pacific tables. We talked about it last time. Ben is making a wonderful table in the U.S., I know at least. And uh, I have sketched mine. Uh, unfortunately, it's a sick table, I think. It's going to take a lot of time, a lot of... Uh, so, but there will be game boards with the popping up with the Pacific flavor in them. But uh, I would be extremely surprised to see anything from the the studio. Yeah, I think we talked a little year. bit about this in in an earlier episode, and I think it's a good idea to kind of zoom out again. I mean, we have been looking at the the Middle East for quite some time, and before that it's been different places like uh, Zverograd, for example. Mm. And I think it was... I think it would be a nice kind of change of pace to zoom out the camera a little bit and and take a look at different places and, you know, follow a bit different storylines. Yeah, people get tired, even if it's great if they are in the same place all the time. You want to experience more things. Uh... That's why I guess our tables, when we have tournaments, look the way they do. We we don't just have one type of tournament tables. We have multitudes of uh, yes. because we want to immerse ourselves in everything. Uh, but 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 um, just just scenery wise produced by the studio, I can't see they drop the Pacific at least this year. Uh, I, they must be waiting until next year. I think. Yeah. Seems likely. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Next question comes from Blake McKayan. Do you think the points uh, on the Avatar of Cthulhu seem fair? Tank 7 and 15 health for 29. I get it's close combat, but it seems a little rough to get through. It depends on what you're fielding yourself. Of course, if seven, armor 7 and 15 hit points is going to take a lot of concentrated effort to get through, of course. Uh, but if you have, like you said, two Wotons, then mm-hmm. if you're lucky, that's one or two uh, good activations and it's done so yeah it, it's hard. as it is right now i can't really see the avatar of cthulhu as as a problem really because i mean it's all about close combat it doesn't have any kind of range if i remember correctly i yeah. don't have the card in front of me now but no. yeah it's it, it's all about close combat yeah and the big boom and then it also got explode, yeah. yeah. So if it dies, make sure you don't have any. <laughs> it doesn't have any of its friend close by, so that kind of limits this as well. And yeah, of course, maybe one of the big things is it can't hold objectives. So I don't know. It has some really big drawbacks. Yeah, and I'm I'm sorry if this sounds bad, but I'm just so looking forward to 
seeing the first Mythos player getting his uh, avatar then blown to hell in his own backyard by a lucky first shot by, for instance, a Votan, and just taking out all the almost all the army of the Mythos player, and then he's just going... <laughs> and I'm just like... <laughs> yeah. I, I don't have to do the shot. I just have to watch it when it happens from afar. I mean, sorry. No, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, so it's all about close combat, and it's got the uh, devour skill, so mm-hmm. it, it heals yeah. when it kills the stuff. So if you let it wreak havoc, yeah, it's going to be <laughs> very difficult. But you can sort of play against it by spreading out a little bit more not not cluster it up too much and uh, yeah it it will have some problems if you play it right i think mm-hmm. it's not an easy easy unit to play by any means you no. have to if you're playing with the avatar you have to think really carefully of what you do with it and it does i mean it doesn't have damage resilience like uh, some of the other big guys have so yeah but but with the devour skill if it had the the, the damage resilience as well that would just be boring i mean yeah, that was it like would be, okay yeah. we stack everything we think is yeah, cool yeah, yeah. on top of each other and this is like a death star super yeah. thing so but but that's that's yeah. that studio is so much cleverer than that yeah. they won't do and, those and things and also the fact that it is a large creature so it yeah. does uh, take up two squares which means it's easier to hit yeah, that's what it's going to be hard to f- hid, hid behind the corner. You can always see it. And yeah, it's that, be, that's um, the thing. That's the thing with a with a smaller uh, spawns mm-hmm. that uh, you can actually hide them as they advance up the table mm-hmm. behind scenery. It's not going to be as easy with a yep. big avatar. So, and I mean, the, the fifteen uh, health points are like instead of damage resilience, as I see it. Yeah, it basically, ne- it, it kind of needs those. Otherwise, it would be too easy to kill it. Definitely, uh, it, it would be not be fun if a guy with the uh, lions were just rushing it and shooting it with their Panzerfaust. Of course, it would. I, I would laugh at that as well. But but it, it would be. Uh, and that 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 said. It is still possible for the African lions to kill it uh, if they mm. get in a good <laughs> shot and then follow up with close combat. Oh yeah, yeah. so mm. it is possible, but perhaps not likely. No, no, and, and also, uh, but that's also one of those uh, like uh, movie moments. Definitely, that definitely. Talking about. And and we all know that lion hunts in pack. At least stiff their endac. They usually come with three or four of those squads. So and just uh, if, if you if you. Uh, Go that point for point. If you have 29 points for the avatar, combine, combine that with... Uh, face that off against three African lions mm, uh, yeah. for 15. I think the lions are going to win that fight. Yeah, definitely. The lions win every fight if they want to. Yeah. Because they are so <laughs> cheap and they're so you can have so many. But. but again, there are new releases coming out later on. We mentioned mm-hmm. Rasputin and we have uh, the... Um, uh, the command squad with the priests and mm-hmm. stuff. So, yeah, that's going to be cool to see how that works out yeah. when you can actually start doing some really crazy stuff with the mythos. Yeah, it's going to be very cool to see what they're going to be able to do then. And then that might uh, force people to do stuff like have more, uh, like... Uh, airdrop units to take care of Rasputin or um, choppers or airplanes yeah. just to target him stuff like that it's yeah it, it's interesting <laughs> it's definitely it definitely is and uh, fortunately we have seen some renders uh, I'm not going to talk about them more but because Paul have showed them on in Poland and other places so we know the solution to this will be some Russian units and I am <laughs> just so loving that they will arrive and almost and that 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 is a good point if you're talking russians then uh, the answer to everything mythos is tesla mm. yeah that, that's one of the reasons why the grom is taking off i yeah. mean <laughs> he's do, he's uh, on a intensive training course for just facing off uh, mythos creatures yeah Right. Uh, next, we have a bunch of questions actually from uh, Adam Shagan. Hmm. Uh, Adam asks: uh, First off, uh, when picking a list, do you feel yourself biased to picking units that you like the look of over functionality and building lists from there, or uh, vice versa? Yeah, every time, one hundred percent. The look is much more important than the the fact what they do. 
The look is very important. Um, well, to me, it kind of depends on uh, where. Um, what will I use the list for? I mean, is it a tournament list or not? Do I want mm. this list to win? Building it for a tournament? If if uh, I am building it for a tournament, of course I'm going to think about the functionality. That is kind of, at least to me, it kind of goes hand in hand. Uh, but the looks of things still is present. Sometimes I um, kind of, uh, do I want this or this? I'm not quite sure. Either could work well. In that case, I would pick the one that looks cooler. No question about it. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. If, if I do a tournament list nowadays, I do. I bring together what I want to play with, which I think look cool, and I perhaps have a some um, cohesive uh, look to it. I play it, and if I make, if I understand that okay, this is gonna suck in the tournament, then I try to remove some parts and replace them. But still, I also I always have the core unit that i want to play and we were doing that last time we were talking about it for me of course it's the pt 47s uh those are at the moment my core thing uh no way near a tournament winning unit but i'm gonna have them in there and if they don't do the business they will have support units they will that will do it for them so and for me it's not really about the individual units themselves Uh, it's rather uh, when you talk about the look it's about the look of the entire army together Mm -hmm. Uh, because i i kind of go for 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 theme in that way like uh, for my endac army i go uh, heavy infantry a few walkers and usually one uh, tank with a a laser panzer Mm. and i just love that combination it just feels so cinematic with the with the walkers supporting the infantry going forward and then the tank rolling up Uh, but i wouldn't want to do that with other types of armies when i go uh, for um, if i go for an uh, allies ranger list maybe then i would go uh, a lot more uh, walker heavy because that's uh, more like the uh, the look of that army uh, mm-hmm. for me uh, so that's basically the way i see it is the the cohesion of the entire army itself uh, <laughs> rather than the individual units if we are playing just casually or playing some kind of um, testing out some scenario or something like that uh, i could probably throw together anything i just felt for at at the time mm. Just whatever I'm in the mood for. Yeah. Uh, Adams, next question. Which unit from Hellgate are you most excited to see come out next? Well, for me, it's Rasputin. Uh, as, as a Mythos player and collector, of course, I really need that guy in my army because he's just so freaking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, Rasputin will be cool when he shows up. I mean, uh, I'm looking forward to playing against him. (laughs) Uh, But for me personally, I'm looking forward to the Desert Scorpion headquarters box that we mentioned before. That's really going to complete that army, I feel, uh, as it is. Yeah, definitely. And it's got the new hero, our uh, favorite Mark. Yep. <laughs> and it's also got the bullseye, which I don't own. I did not manage to, to get hold of it. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, putting your hands all over Mark is just uh, too good to be true. <laughs> uh, he's just a no-brainer. Uh, I'm just, yeah basically um but of course also the mercenary uh, command squad that one is uh, uh, for the same reason i want to put my hands on them uh, yeah. so <laughs> now but seriously both those two i feel uh, are interesting and fun uh, seem to be very good for the playability and yeah well my top my top ones Right, and uh, the final question from Adam is, uh, what mythos creatures uh, or units do you think should come out next? Uh, I'm hoping for deep ones or named Migo yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I, I kind of feel like this is uh, this is for me. So well, if you're talking about units, then I, I'd already said Rasputin because we know what he's doing for it. But uh, when it comes to uh, other things that we've seen, kind of. Uh, uh, previewed uh, that flying flying mat guy mm. <laughs> i really want that hero I, I just it's so ridiculous and just amazing at the same time 
I totally agree. Uh, we need to have it, even though I, I dread it some in the same way. Uh, but the the, uh, the the little the little car with the five uh, um, guys throwing grenades. Oh yeah, we heard about that. Yeah. yeah, that's sickening, and I would love to see that. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> and then also I would dread that. But I mean, five guys in fesses and throwing grenades—that's just or oh, dynamite <laughs> sticks. That is. It, in, and all in that car because we've seen the the girls in the car with the machine guns. There's mm. so you know it was my number one yeah. for. So I, I of course I want to see the fesses. Yeah. All right. Then we have two uh, rules questions coming from Wong Koi Hina. They, these are base, base, mainly for you, I think, Magnus, our resident <laughs> rules expert here. Uh, so his first question is: A zombie hero joins a mindless zombie unit. The unit is still mindless and thus cannot take objectives. Is this correct? Uh, I actually asked this exact question sometime after the latest rule set came out. And if, as I recall, I really didn't get an answer for it. So uh, I don't know about this one. Uh, personally... If I was asked the question like in a tournament setting or whatever, I would probably rule that the unit is not mindless anymore because it's led by a hero. So at least the hero knows what to do. To me, it's like those mindless zombies. They don't take orders very well. They don't they don't know what an ob- objective is, but the hero knows and can kind of control the unit, I would suppose. Mm. Yeah, so. most definitely he probably have some smelling salt or something or some extra blood on his back or something that they keep following him when he moves off in a direction. Uh, you could, of course, play it like you need to kill all the zombies that are mindless and when they die, it's only a non-mindless zombie left and he can then claim objective. Uh, that's another way to do it, um, which also is little fun because usually you only always take the first wounds on the hero to save to have all the units left mm-hmm. but then you get the you have to choose should I try to take objective with this unit or should I try to break havoc with it but uh, well, and I I personally would be fine if someone had a hero and a zombie group in together and they took the objective I would let them take the objective but I, I you are the rule master, so when you say it's like that, I will say it. It's like I'm, I'm not saying it's like that. That's just how I would rule it. Um, and that's for it is like that. Sorry, <laughs> we, we we are two. You are one. Yeah, if thanks. you say it, it's the truth. <laughs> No, I don't know. It's, uh, and to me, this, the zombie army isn't really that strong at the moment. So I don't see a problem making it that tiny bit stronger to be able to to That's hold a good objectives. Point, actually. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't really see the the downside of it to no, be no, honest. So uh, if somebody, if my opponent was playing zombies, I would be totally fine with his hero led units being able to hold objectives. Yeah. Right here, here. Second question for line of sight rules. What is the meaning of far side in uh, this blocks line of sight to units on the far side? Uh, so this is also in uh, in gridded. So is it uh, a the opposite side, opposite side of the side where the tracing of the line of sight enters the square, or is it b any of the sides of the square counts as the far side? Um. I've seen, I remember some discussion about this earlier, and I think people kind of put too much emphasis on that word, the far side. I think it means like the other side, mm. you, meaning you... So if the if the line of sight is traced through that square, it doesn't matter how it's through, just that it is through that square. Yeah, exactly. The mm. line does not continue. It, it, it stops the line, basically. So it doesn't mean one specific side. Mm. It means, yeah, you, you can't draw the line through... Through the square. Yeah. 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 Far side of the moon. <laughs> remember the song, remember all the movie. <laughs> yeah, then just you know how to work this. Yeah, because if it meant the exact opposite side, it would get really weird sometimes when you're having, you know, some kind of angle or something and, and mm-hmm. try to figure it out. Yeah. So. 
Right. I think it's uh, it's option B in this case. Yeah, uh, I would probably agree. That's how we've always played it, and uh, I really haven't. We haven't had any problems with playing it like that. So it's basically, like you said, a, probably kind of an over interpretation of the actual yeah, word. Yeah. Uh, right. Next question comes from Brian Keith Yunes. Uh, how do you guys feel about the IJ and the Japanese infantry? I love the ninjas and I like the cadets, but I'd really like some line troopers. Well, we do know that the paratroopers are coming at some point. We haven't seen uh, anything apart from the renders, uh, I think. So they might still be uh, a little way off, a few months at least. But we it we could be surprised. Yeah, it's a brand new block that just got released like a month ago, something like that. And we yeah. just see how how long it's uh, taken the, for the uh, for the Desert Scorpions and the PLA to get fleshed yeah, out. It um, could be a while. I'm so. I'm sure there will be a lot more. Yeah, of course, <coughs> many more units of, uh, of different be. kinds. Uh, it's it just takes a little bit of time. They can't release everything at once. No, and also, I, I, some some part of me hopes that there will be no, I mean, proper proper line units for them, because I think those should be reserved for the Imperial Army. Uh, I think I, I think the, it would be nice that it would be a big shift between the navy and the the army. So whatever line unit they produce, I hope they will be a little bit tweaked at least, a little bit special. Uh, and since they all already have two different units, even though they are similar, I still think you have um, more options, uh, okay, okay amount of options. So um, I almost don't want them to produce a line unit for, <laughs> for the Imperial Navy. <laughs> Sorry, what, do, what do we think of the ones that are released, the ninjas and the cadets? I want to play them, I want to own them. Yeah, I, I really haven't had that much experience with them yet. I have started to uh, put together a kind of starting army, but I haven't had the time to uh, actually experiment with playing them. So um, I, 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 I like to uh, just think about the, op- the sort of uh, combinations you can do with them and uh, just how you can use them in certain ways. But um, yeah... It, I have a hard time just wrapping my head around the Japanese because they seem like they are going to take some very different thinking to play well compared to at least how I'm used to playing the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I'm thinking all you out there, buy them and play me, please, <laughs> quickly, right. now. <laughs> right. Next question comes from Mateusz Kuczynski. Uh, he asked, we have starter boxes for most of the factions in the game. But we don't have bo- such boxes for uh, some of the block armies. So uh, do you think those are coming? What would you put inside such a bo- box? Um, and f- uh, from what I've seen, the only three factions in the game at the moment that don't have a starter box are the Axis uh, block, the Wehrmacht, the SSU block, the Red Army, and the SSU guards. Um, so what would you, what would we put inside such a box? We have a box for the Rangers, for the block version for the Allies with the Rhino squad. Those are mm-hmm. Rangers. Uh, and I think he m- might be thinking of the, uh, the Soldier 2 Rangers that they might be. But I don't think that's... Um, that's going to come now because uh, of because of the that block, so to speak, already has that uh, starter with the Rhino box. Yeah, those. Uh, I mean, most of the block units in the game, and also um, a lot of the gar- the SSU guards units, they have a few years uh, since they were released. So I think. I also think that we will not see any such boxes for a little while, probably. Uh, I mean, in the future, they will probably get some kind of remake and re-release and do-overs. But those those models are kind of old, so to say, now. Even if they are good and still working very well in the game. Um, that was my first reaction as well. But then uh, I started to thinking about the Rhino starter box and the new upcoming Heavy Rangers army box. Mm-hmm. Those are also 
older units yeah, and older true. sculpts. That's so the, the studio has done stuff uh, with those. Uh, so the question is, what, what, I don't feel that the, the possibility isn't there. Uh, the question is, what would those include? And I think in some cases, they would have to be some new releases. For instance, for the guards... Yeah. No, but uh, I was actually now sitting and thinking about the guards. Uh, of course, I would love to have a, a, a guard, um, a new guard unit, because they only have two, of course. But those are two of the best units in the game, at least the assault ones. Uh, I would have... You're talking about... You're talking about the red guard at this point, but yeah. that's if you... Consider the possibility that the starter books, the starter box, could actually be the steel guard. Yeah, of, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm way ahead of you. I promise you. <laughs> uh, so uh, my box would be a babushka, because uh, we need those in 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 print again mm-hmm. because they have been too hard to get. I mean, so a babushka should be there. You should have the. Uh, uh, tank hunting uh, guard unit le- uh, infantry two. Because you need the um, you need the basokas, yeah, and then you should have the steel guard snipers. Hmm. Those three together would make an excellent starting box, uh, and you can take out almost everything with those guys because they will shoot at infantry, they will shoot at airplanes, they will shoot at tanks, hmm. and they will do. Yeah. All. There are two uh, problems that I see with that. Okay, uh, uh, the one, there is no hero in that box, uh, so that kind of breaks the mold for all the other starter boxes. Uh, and uh, all the other starter boxes also have only uh, light vehicles. So there would be, and that's a problem because there are no light vehicles at this point for the guard faction. So there have, would have, if they are going to include a light vehicle, they would have to create one. And an easy way to do that, I think, would be to just uh, make a guard version of the transport PT-47. That could be uh, a thing, yeah, I I do agree with you. I actually also, uh, at least I claim that, uh, left the hero one out, because to me, the SSU, both the guards and the block, seriously need some new heroes. Uh, Yeah, the block has the heroes in uh, for the flyers but, but don't you usually say that every soldier of the SSU is a hero definitely <laughs> so in that case you could just leave it out of course but but uh, the guard only have nikolai and uh, so they they could do or they have the guilo of course and uh, sorry uh, yeah, and my he's bad. already in the hq box yeah, so he's so off the limits definitely. basically so, so so some some new pilot perhaps with another set of skills you know what could actually be in that box uh, if we're going to look in the in the future we know that there's some new steel guards coming yeah the tesla baton guys mm. and that they are probably getting a hero mm. So, so could that be a possible starter box with oh, yeah. the, those units and uh, maybe a transport for mm-hmm. them? Yeah, yeah. That I, I would. I'm not a big SSU player. I'm not a big SSU collector. But I would buy that box definitely. Uh, and then of course you can switch out the uh, anti-tank level two guys and just leave the uh, sniper ones because then you have the range uh, that can suppress and make people. Uh, Uh, take cover while the jumpers come rushing at you Uh, and you still need that um, uh, well you are a little bit weak there on uh, machine guns because you only have the babushka and the babushka without the damage resilience is so easy to take out even though it's a level 5 but still uh, and you don't need the matryoshka yet even though we're playing more and more 3 mat games it's the babushka that needs to be really put in use again um, and I think many people will play the babushka if only they could get their hands on yeah. it. Right. Uh, if we're talking about SSU block, uh, what could po- we be the possibilities there? Red Yana, maybe? Is that something? Yeah, you know, and we need a new Red Yana model because she needs to be a pilot somewhere. Because she pilots uh, Nadia. Uh, so we need that could also easily work then, as have a Red Yana, and a Nadia, uh, it's her, uh, and then she's boosted with, and I mean, I, I so like the machine dudes, oh, okay, I should know their name, of course, with the, the, the regular infantry twos with two 
heavy machine guns. Uh, I, 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 for some reason, I can't just remember their name now. But but uh, those would do with a, a resculpt also, perhaps, or with a better quality because they were bendy like shit. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, so like the new super technique with those and Nadia. And then what would be great for them to be mixed on? The easy one would be the, of course, the sulfur close combat guys, because then you can almost also. But then you're a little weak against air, so. Uh, but but perhaps you could give the um, Regina. I don't know, but possibly I mean, with a machine gun on her. A starter yeah. is still a starter, so yeah. you don't have to cover all the bases with just a starter. No, no, no. It's just that you, it's it's always nice when you feel that you can. You don't you don't suffer when you meet a certain type of opponent. I mean, so uh, but, but the sulfur guys would do with the machine guys. Gun, you know that 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 could be a really nice little box yeah. to play with. On. And if we look at the final, uh, then the axis block, the Wehrmacht. Uh, we have that old, uh, the older starter box from the uh, mm. from the Fantasy Flight and Battlefront days with Stefan in mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if we're going to go in a completely different way, do you have any sort of thoughts about what hero might go into that box? Hmm. I don't know. It's um, probably the same as as we as you said before there that some kind of new guy mm. or girl a, n- a new hero something to to shake it up a little bit uh i mean the old box was nice and all but it's kind of obsolete because uh, it included a blood kreutz unit yeah so that wouldn't really make sense as the nope. game is now um but yeah, new hero put in. I don't know, maybe a new unit as well, and uh, maybe a Hans. Uh, yeah, one basically any of the of the light walkers would do. They're they're, they're, all, did, they're all good in there. Yeah, own the way, axes so. have several, and they're all good. So you can you can do whatever combination you want there. Yeah, and, but of course it has to have a Ludwig. That's a no-brainer. The walker has to be a Ludwig. The end of discussion. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and if they sh- feel that they can break the mold, and of course they have done that in, in uh, different ways with the other starter box. I mean, look at the uh, the PLA starter box with the uh, Dragon and the Phoenix with two un- two heroes in yeah. in the box. So they have shown them do that, and I agree that the. Ludwig is definitely the most iconic walker for the Axis Wehrmacht, definitely. And point point wise, the best you can have in the game, mm. almost. So uh, it's just uh, it's just a no brainer. Uh, but and also the Axis is also actually they are spoiled with heroes, but none for the block almost yeah. these days. So uh, um, a walker for uh, a hero for the Axis would be uh, would be nice. Would be nice. Right. Uh, our next question comes from Tim Balki. Any thoughts on what they may do for third allied faction? Uh, yeah, th- this is a question that's uh, come up uh, before in some place because it does seem that they are due for a new faction, the allies. Um, I don't think it's going to be anytime soon because we just had the Desert Scorpions. But if we compare with the other blocks, uh, they are one short, basically. Well, they we have the Desert Scorpions, we have the U.S. Marines, and we have the Special Service Brigade. <laughs> yeah, of course, but there's only <laughs> two units for it. Yes, so <laughs> what I'm saying is, why not, instead of creating a fourth, why not... You know, flesh out the flesh out, uh, the, flesh the, out yeah. Yeah, definitely. The, the special service brigade and make it actually playable. Definitely, yeah. sure. Uh, that would be so great. And uh, also, of course, I, I'm a little bit ticked off that they, for some reason, seems to be having something against Brits. Uh, I can understand all the nationalities making up the studio. They don't like the Brits. But hey, it's, it's <laughs> but that, it's actually, so if if we are thinking about that, would actually be a perfect place for the crocodile. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So so so, and um, it's it's just um, it just would be so right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 
And finally, uh, our last question comes from uh, the Game Chefs. Uh, with, uh, with the amphibious units being released lately, do you think we will see any full naval units in the future, such as ships or hovercrafts? Um, what do you think? Uh, my answer to that would be no. Uh, that would probably mean that you have to put the... Uh, it, it, it kind of doesn't work with the scale of the game, I feel. Yeah, I also think that would be kind of odd. I mean, there are rules and you can um, play with the, uh, the, what's landing, craft? the landing craft. Yeah. yeah. But more, I mean, f like full battleships or something. No, that it, it, it wouldn't really work, I think. No, it, it would be hard. Uh, then you have to have like two playmats or something. One with the when you play the uh, the the bigger, I mean the big ships on because they can't fit on uh, on the on the smaller uh, mats. But um, th th there should be a possibility to do something. But also, I think that would be when they, in that case, go to the Pacific scenarios and Pacific islands and stuff like that. Then perhaps they also will uh, release some more water-like crafts or something. Um, I recollect that Paolo showed us a SSU tank in Poland that was amphibious, uh, a bigger tank. So, uh, and I think it was going to one it's going to go for the SSU and the block, just like the Grom, but like a big motherfucking tank, and it was like going through water and stuff. So I, I think those things will crop up a little bit and I think water will be interesting in the future mm -hmm. but definitely it will be very hard to see unfortunately uh, that we will see ships I would love to have a mat that had piece of a, a hang, ha hangar ship of course so I could yeah so you could fight on the deck uh, on the ship basically yeah. or mm -hmm. basically that you could have like um like um, taking off your aircraft from there or something like that or and then but then there could be small boats that can they could produce those like uh, I mean um, assault boats for with one square that it's like the wreck marker for Hellgate and you could like so you put your minis on that and you move them on the on the map it could it could work it could be nice yeah may, the, I mean maybe smaller things uh, like yeah small boats small uh, landing crafts uh, maybe hovercraft uh, but I'm thinking possible it's possible that they are going to do something like that for the Vril maybe mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I could see Vril using hovercraft I don't know I really don't know anything more than the f very few rumors that they have dropped but yeah, that, I can see Vril using hovercraft, definitely. And in that case, I would be surprised if they release something similar for for the current factions before mm. that. That would be kind yeah, of... Yeah, that's true. And also, the, the final, final question from the Game Chefs. What are some of your favorite pieces of terrain to use when playing? Uh, well, uh, for me, I absolutely love everything with uh, a bit of height to it because that ha that just adds so much to just the look and the feel of the game. So er everything everything that has uh, multiple levels that does uh, tons for just the enjoyment of the games I play. I feel. Yeah, just just going from two D to three D. Is, is immense it makes the game for me so much better definitely um, there are so many things that is just fun with on um, putting on the board I, I just wish I could give and actually one should never for instance neglect the stack of ammo crates especially when the new rules has come out about I mean just resupplying on them I, I think that is uh, um, it's an old but goldie the, that type of terrain having a stack of, of ammo crates but um, well yeah the, the, the height is always good I, I agree with you guys uh, I shouldn't expect I, shouldn't, I don't have to say more. Yeah, I mean, I, I've always been a kind of sucker for city fighting uh, mm. uh, scenarios. So uh, buildings, <laughs> buildings, I would say, which goes also with the height thing. Mm. Yeah. So gives you lots of interesting choices in the game. Yeah. 
Yeah, I absolutely agree. All right, so let's round off this episode with a little bit of tournament talk. Uh, like I mentioned at the start of the start of the show here, we uh, recently had a, a tournament here in Sweden in Linköping, which was really really cool. It was uh, very narrative based. We were fighting for the town itself, and uh, it was kind of a coalition. So all the uh, um, <laughs> the, there was some fighting between the blocks. So we had a big uh, part of the, the the kind of storyline was that the SSU had invaded and took control of the city and was up to the coalition of the allies and the Axis to fight them off. <laughs> uh, there was re- and it was really really hard fighting and that's where I kind of broke in my Desert Scorpions. So that was uh, that was amazing just to get that uh, kind of narrative feel for them. One thing I noticed there is that people. Uh, it might be because they're still so new, but uh, people just aren't prepared for how fast the desert scorpions are. <laughs> you don't think they are because they, the the uh, the normal infantry still just moves two four, but when they're mounted in their transports with the with the assault rule, it just they're just gone. <laughs> in the final final game where we were all players going together in a one big match which was just epic, um, there was kind of a, a, a resource gathering mission so we would have to go into the map and pick up objective markers and bring them back to our starting points and my Desert Scorpions managed to was the only guys that managed to get in and just pick stuff up in the first turn. Not even the Luftwaffe managed that. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, uh, there will be a lot of wins for uh, Desert Scorpions in the near future. That's I think that's so, sure. before people have a chance to adapt to them and get to know their playstyle and how to counter them. So, yeah. And that was also, I think, a good... Uh, that uh, for for me and for others uh, was a, and the games that you and I had mm-hmm. that was specifically to prepare for Dust Nordic, yeah. which is coming up. We were playtesting some of the uh, some of the scenarios and yep. some of the armies that we were looking forward to using. I'm not playing in the tournament myself unless I absolutely have to mm-hmm. because there's going to be a lot of work just kind of getting it together, but. Uh, there's been kind of a surge of uh, applicants also. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to fill up. So if you are interested in going to Dust Nordic, go to dustnordic.com right now and sign up before all the play- all the <laughs> seats are gone. <laughs> so stuff is coming up there. Then we also have uh, another uh, local tournament coming up in Lin- uh, Linköping uh, at Lincoln, uh, the big uh, game convention. So that's the uh, the last of May. Mm. <laughs> yes. So not the first of May. <laughs> no. <laughs> the outdoor effing starts today. No. Uh, it's the last of May this time. So <laughs> we don't know what's going on outside. We're just more interested in what's going in going on inside <laughs> of the convention there. So that that's going to be real cool. I have not um, don't really know much but they just recently put up uh, the date. Uh, that they are going to do something yes, like that. Yes, so I, I just got this information, uh, uh, I think it was yesterday, I think. So I just put it up on our local Dust Vikings uh, website. Uh, it's a it's a straight-up 100-point tournament. Uh, yeah, it's one yeah. of the new guys uh, just coming into yeah. the game, arranging. So yeah, it's going to exactly. be interesting. Um, yeah. And that, that's one of the things that we really like with the... Uh, with the community we have that every person who arranges a tournament seems to have their own ideas on how to do it and yeah. that, and that makes it uh, just completely different experiences every time i love that yeah yeah that's great and then of course we have the big european championship coming up uh, this summer in uh, june mm-hmm. oh, oh sorry in july mm-hmm. and uh, this time oh, it's June. June. It is June. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is Mid, June. Mid that's June. because yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly. <laughs> and that's kind of the what's been the problem for me that it's in June because uh, because of work. I'm usually pretty busy going on trips for for work and such. Uh, that's why I missed it last year. So um, that's why you want us to start saying it's in July. Until <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, change. <laughs> exactly. So it's, it's in July. It's Starting a p- petition. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to our voice. It's the dust <laughs> European champion. It's in yes. July. No, no. But this this year, uh, I am definitely going. Hmm? 
I, uh, it's just nothing is going to stop me this time. Mm. I've already booked my plane tickets, so mm. I am definitely going. Oh, that's, that's great. Uh, that's very interesting. Yeah, I'm looking mm. at it. I'm hoping I will be able to make it. I'm not sure, but this is the first time in a few years now that it's when it's not on my wedding anniversary. Yeah. So that's that's a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> He's listened. <laughs> that's good. Uh, yeah, I, I I can't see myself not going. Uh, it's a little bit too far ahead for me to start planning it uh, due to the fact I have to plan my holidays and try to get in my yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. vacation with the daughter and stuff like that. But uh, if I don't go, I will be shocked. That's for sure. Uh, so... Uh, so it looks like uh, the chances of meeting up uh, the entire World Journal staff if you go to the European Champions is, is uh, looking quite high. Yeah. So. Three easy wins for anyone <laughs> taking part. So that you know that now. It's, you yes. guarantee three wins if you go to the Poland Championship <laughs> this year. And uh, we also have some, it's, it's not really anything finalized, but just looking forward into the future, we may be looking at going a bit further next year. Mm, yeah, yeah. We yeah. have some kind of ideas, at least. Mm-hmm. There's been some rumblings in the Viking community of maybe going across the pond. Yeah. And we're not talking Britain this time. No. <laughs> we're, we're talking the further. big pond. Yeah. We're going to Iceland. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, we have to. I mean, we've been to Britain. Now, then we have to go to Iceland. Then we go for... Yeah, we, we, fo- we follow the path of the Vikings. Yeah, so yeah. The, the... Like <laughs> Oakland Island and stuff it's, like that. And we, we It go might there. take a while, but... Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we come with our long boats, so... Yeah, I, I, well, most, I would prefer to go by boat than by air but you know me so yeah <laughs> but you have yeah. your sea legs so you don't get seasick yeah yeah no problem <laughs> uh been working actually at a company that uh, were ferrying people to britain and some of those crosses were like you you came up after the night was over and all the uh, c- cattery of porcelain and stuff was crushed in the in the, in, on, in the kitchen area of the boat, but I slept like a fucking baby. So <laughs> it's, I, I have no problem with the sea, um, but the air is another story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we'll see how that turns out. We have m- more information about that when we mm-hmm. when we ourselves get it, because it's still a long way off. But uh, at least that's our hope for now. Mm-hmm. So, uh, until we hear from us uh, next time, I would like to thank everyone out there for listening. Uh, So, thank you from me, Johannes. And from Magnus. And a big thank you and a big hug and kiss from the big Luda. And, as usual, we will see you on the battlefield. Thank you for listening to Dust War Journals. You can find us at dustwarjournals.com or on social media at Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Dust War Journals. And you can find our Patreon page at patreon.com slash dustwarjournals. All music used in this podcast is made by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com.